Combine an AI assistant chatbot deal with AI image generation, add some automation and a little bit of fun, and you end up with something called Glyph.ai. Sort of hard to explain, so let me show it to you. This is the Glyph.ai homepage. Up on the logo, it says Alpha, which tells us it's like a first version, first round, just starting out kind of thing. Now, at first glance, it looks like a just for fun kind of a platform. For instance, the 1950s creature feature poster, where you type in some kind of a prompt and it uses that and magically generates a poster in the look of a creature feature kind of film. As you scroll down through, you see other fun options like meme generation or creating these old GeoCities sites based on whatever prompt you have. This is a glyph that I created for the purpose of getting realistic images. I wanted to be able to use Flux One Pro, but I didn't want to have to specify certain things every time I created a prompt to generate an image in Flux One Pro. I wanted to sort of know some stuff about what I wanted from the get-go, plus I'm not so good at these long prompts, so I wanted it to enhance and add details to whatever simple thing I typed in. Over on the right, it shows you some of the outputs from this glyph, and on the left, very simple to start, enter your prompt. I left the default prompt as an athlete crossing the finish line of a marathon. That's this image over here, but we can do something totally different. So I'll use the prompt that old man sitting on a park bench, click run this glyph. It shows you on the right sort of the steps that it's going through, the original prompt, a revised prompt, and then generating an image. Once the image produces, you can roll your mouse over and download the image, you can share it, you can like it, you can delete it, or you can zoom in on it and see it in a little bit better detail. We'll close that out. There's lots of glyphs to pick from that do all sorts of different things, but one of the really cool things about glyph.ai is that you can take an existing glyph and modify it and make it your own or you can build one from scratch. For me, starting out, I like to see what other people have done, see how it works, and then go from there. So to do that, if you come run my Realistic Images glyph, which works with Flux One Pro and Sonnet, over on the right, you'll see this little squiggly that says Remix. So if we click on Remix, what you've got here is a copy of the glyph that I created it copied the name and all the functions of it, and it just added remix in parentheses at the end of the name. Over on the right side, you have the glyph testing area. This is where you can test the thing out and see how it works without having to publish it and make it go live and then keep going back and forth from an edit page to a testing page. The block sequence below that shows you what's happening in this glyph. The first thing is an original prompt, then a revised prompt, then an image that comes out of it. That sequence is broken down over here on the left between each of these plus signs is a block that's what it's called in glyph and the first one is a text block named original prompts where it has the label that says enter your prompt and the default prompt that i put in of the athlete crossing the finish line of a marathon if you want to change the label just click the little pencil icon you can change that to whatever you want if you want to change the prompt that i put in as the default text there select it and change it to whatever you like now what's happening in this next block is it's taking that original prompt it's sending it off to an AI chatbot or AI assistant, LLM, whatever you want to call it, and it's enhancing that prompt based on these instructions that I've provided right here in this block. So I start by saying, I have provided an image prompt below inside the parentheses that will be used to generate an image using an AI image generator. Your task is to revise the provided prompt, adding detail to generate an AI image that looks like a photograph. Moving down the prompt, I also tell it if human faces are going to result from this prompt, here's some things that I want you to consider to make it more realistic. Then I tell it to avoid using freckles in the revised prompt unless freckles is explicitly included in the original prompt. And I say the same thing about makeup. And that's because in my testing and running this thing a whole bunch of times, it seemed like every image that was a portrait, it was putting a band of freckles from one cheek across the nose over to the other cheek. And it looked almost identical in every single image. I don't have anything against freckles, but I don't want it to just arbitrarily put freckles on every person that it ever creates an image of in the exact same band across from cheek to nose to cheek. And then I also tell it only output the revised prompt without an introduction, explanation, or commentary. Avoid using quotation marks, bullet points, or any other unnecessary formatting. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you've used ChatGPT or Gemini or Perplexity or Claude or any of them, when you ask it for something, if you tell it, hey, I want you to create a prompt I can use to generate an image, the response will usually start off with, 
I've created the prompt that you've asked for using this, this, and this, and blah, blah, blah. And then it lists out the actual prompt. And then after it, it says something like, this should give you the image that you're looking for with blah, 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 and blah, blah. And sometimes it'll split up parts of that into bullet points and put it all in quotes and do a whole bunch of weird stuff. We're telling it here, we just want the prompt. Don't give us all your other crap, just the prompt. Then at the very end in parentheses, you'll see it says original prompt. And that's in green because that's a variable. So to get that before that was there, I'll just delete that out. I just come over here and click on original prompt. And then since I told it in the beginning, I'm gonna be putting this prompt for you in parentheses. I went ahead and put it in parentheses. And the reason I added this inside the parentheses part in here is because there's a lot here in multiple different paragraphs and I didn't want it to get confused and think that any of these instructions that I was giving it to write the image prompt were actually part of the original image prompt. Now we have a predictability slider where we can tell it to go anywhere from predictable through creative up to insane. I wanted to be somewhere between predictable and creative, so I've kept it on the low side and that seems to be working pretty well. If we drop down the advanced controls, you've got some options like the max number of tokens and tokens is the measure of how much information is being passed to and from this AI chatbot LLM, whatever you want to call it. The default is 200. Given the size of my prompt and the details that I've added, I increased that to 400 and that seems to be working better. You can pick the model that you want to use. I'm using Claude 3.5 Sonnet and you have options including Llama, GPT, various different versions of that, Gemini, Perplexity, and on and on. The one that I found that works best in this situation is Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And then the system prompt, which is basically the persona that you're giving the AI, I've added in there, you're an AI prompt engineer, you write prompts that are used with AI art generators to create stunning images that are indistinguishable from photograph. All right, so all of these instructions and settings come together and send this original prompt off to Claude 3.5 Sonnet to generate an image prompt. And then when that image prompt comes back, I've added another block, which is an image generation block. Only thing I put in the prompt here is revised prompt. And that is a variable I could choose from original prompt or revised prompt, or I could type other things in here or type things in addition to this revised prompt, but all I want to send to the image generator is whatever Claude 3.5 Sonnet generated. So that's what it's doing. In the prompt box for the image generator, it's just pasting in that revised prompt that came out of Claude. The settings you have available here include which image generation model. For this glyph, I'm using Flux Pro. You could pick one of these other options. For the last few days when I've attempted to use Dolly 3, I get a message that Dolly is not available at the moment and I haven't gotten results that I like out of these other models other than the Flux Pro, Dev, and Schnell. You can specify the image size from the options that are available and then under advanced controls you can tell it how many steps you want to go and the prompt power that you want to use and this is how much weight your prompt is given. Now remember this is just a copy of my glyph so if you've come in you've seen my glyph you've said I want to remix it and you're now in this screen you can play around with this now and say well I don't want square images I want landscape 16 by 9 and I've heard that the prompt power of 3.5 is too much so let's try that at 2. Perfectly fine. You can even say I don't want to use Flux Pro I want to see how this will do with Flux Schnell. Now see when we switch that to Schnell our image size went back to square HD 1 to 1 so we'd have to switch that back to landscape if that's what we wanted. The number of steps 4 is the recommended steps for Schnell the fast Flux 1 model and we lose that that other option of prompt power that's not available with Schnell. So I'll go ahead and flip that back to Pro. I'll take our prompt power back to 2.0 where we had set it for our little test and the steps it sort of stayed on 4 from Schnell and that's probably not where we want to be so we're going to take it back up to the 28 default where it was and I'll have to switch this back to landscape since I switched the model a couple of times it reset every time. So now you've taken my glyph and you've made some changes to it. Let's go ahead up here in our testing area and instead of an athlete crossing the finish line I'm going to use the same prompt that we generated with when we came in here and then we'll say run this glyph. 
Here's the image that it generated after making those changes. And remember, my prompt enhancement is all about trying to make this a realistic photograph. So if you tried to do an illustration with this or you're upset that it didn't come out like an oil painting, well, that's because in that prompt, in the enhancement of the prompt, I'm telling it everything to make it turn into a realistic photograph. That's the goal. Something else that's really cool when you're editing a glyph, we created this image in our glyph testing area. If we look over on the left at our blocks, we can see what the output of our block was. The only intermediary block we have here between type in a basic prompt and give me an image is this revised prompt. So if we come down to the bottom of this, we can drag this out and see, this is the prompt that was ultimately fed to Flux One Pro to generate our image. Even though I typed old man sitting on a park bench, then by going through those instructions using that original old man on a park bench, this is the prompt that Claude 3.5 Sonnet came up with. And this is much more detailed and wordy than what I have the patience to create. So if you've created this glyph, you've tested it and you're happy with it, you can just click this publish button up here in the upper right. If you were just poking around under the hood and decided this isn't something that you wanted to mess with, or maybe you were building and got yourself in so many steps and so confused you need to start over. Maybe that's just me that that happens to. Anyway, if you need to delete what you're working on, you can just click the X. It gets rid of that glyph that you were working on and you'll be on a page not found page because the page that you were just on has been deleted. You just deleted it. Like I said, you can build glyphs from scratch just by clicking this build button up here. Start with a template. They give you a few like the LLM powered image generator. That's very similar to the one that I built. Or if you want to go from completely blank to create yours, you just click this plus button and you start with a starting block. You've got your user input blocks up here, like text or an image to be uploaded or a multi-select box, AI things, like if you wanted to talk to ChatGPT or Claude or whatnot, image generators, image to text. You can also use tools like a text combiner to take multiple outputs and put them in a single string. JSON, if you're into that, got some styling options here. I'll show you what Canvas does because because that is pretty cool. And then some more advanced features, for instance, a glyph block, which lets you use other glyphs in your glyph. So maybe you say, well, Bob, I really like what you created with this realistic image from Flux One Pro. I'd like to take the image that gets generated from your glyph and then animate that image. Well, no problem. You can add this glyph block and say, okay, the first thing I wanna do is run Bob's glyph. And then when we get that output from Bob's glyph, then we're gonna do whatever other things that you wanna do. Looking at this glyph, which is the what people think I do, you put in any job or hobby or career, whatever you want up here. I'll say electrician. This glyph also offers a style. I'm just gonna leave it on photography, run this glyph, and it's generated this very well-known meme with some pretty accurate pictures pictures in there. Now I want to look under the hood of this one. So let's click that remix button. So first it's got a text input and it says meme about what? That's where we typed in electrician. Then the next thing it has is style. That's that drop down where we just left it on photography, but we could have done cartoon or any of these other things. Moving down to the next block is the generate meme. If we drop down the advanced controls, we can see that it's going to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I love the persona prompt he uses for this one, which is you're an unhinged meme creator. That's hysterical. But the prompt up here is basically describing what it wants to do with these images, how to create these six different images. The max tokens, instead of the default 200, they have gone to 2000. I imagine because you're trying to write the prompt here that's gonna get you the prompts to get six different images. So then the process flows down and we come to this JSON block. Remember all these things that are in these colors, the green, the purple, and whatnot, those are all variables. It has just pasted that in here to the JSON and it is parsing the data out. Now, if speaking in JSON is too much for you, don't worry about it. There's plenty of things you can do without ever using the JSON block. Again, that's not even the part of this glyph that I was interested in seeing. I want to see the canvas deal. And this just happens to be a step earlier in the process. After it parses this JSON data and it has split out the boss, myself, my friends, my parents, and all that stuff, then we have these image generation steps. You can tell they're image generation
generation steps because they have this icon over here. You can also tell by looking down here under image generation model, it says Flux Schnell. This one is friends. The next block is parents. So it's one by one sending the prompts over to generate the images that it wants for this final meme. And these are all the same except for which panel the image is being generated for like myself, my parents, or the what I actually do. Then when we come down to the bottom after it's generated all six of those images, then we have the canvas block. What we can find here is there's an underlying template. So we have this black background. We have this text that's been placed underneath of each image. And then what's in green and purple, these variables. So input one, so that's taking whatever we typed in that prompt box, like I did electrician. So it'll put electrician up top there. And then for this panel, it's looking for friends, whatever the image generation output was that was labeled friends. It's going to put that image here. It's going to put the one that was labeled parents here and on down the line. So that's pretty darn cool. And I can imagine there are a million creative ways you could use this. You could have sort of a book cover template that between using the AI to write things for your book cover and write a prompt to generate an image, you could have all kinds of silliness. You could do one of those wanted posters and do all kinds of things in your different blocks to get to where you generate the images or upload your own image and have random text or specified text all around that. And even though that's a meme generator and it really is kind of a just for fun, there are practical use cases for having this canvas, which is a template that you set up the way you want. And then you use some of these other blocks to generate images based on what you want and place them where they're supposed to be within that template. Now, I don't want to keep this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this X button and get out of there. Also want to show you that further down on the glyphs, in addition to the memes and some of the, the fun stuff, you also have things like utility glyphs, which includes a YouTube video summarizer, a background replacer or remover. You've got video generators. Now look, none of these are going to take over Pixar or Hollywood or anything like that anytime soon. They're not on that level, but they do actually have some practical applications that I've been able to tinker around with. Now, as I said, glyph.ai is free to use. If we click on my avatar here and then look at this daily rate limit and see this 38, click on that rascal and you will find that there is a daily limit on use, which is currently 100 runs per day. And they say this is subject to change. So as of this recording, you can do 100 glyph runs per day for free. After that, you're just done and they can change that number 100 anytime they want. They are also upfront here that we may have additional paid plans in the future. So what that's going to look like, whether there's going to be everything's paid, certain glyphs are paid or certain number of runs is free and then it's paid. That's yet to be seen. I say go enjoy it now while it's free. There's a whole lot of things that you can do with this that are beyond the fun stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. The fun stuff is fun, but be being able to link up and automate and connect different AIs, whether it's text, image, video, whatnot, all in one place, create some opportunities. Maybe you want to have a prompt box where you type something in and you send it off to ChatGPT to get an answer or write a list or something for you, because maybe you like the substance of what ChatGPT gives you, but then you want to take whatever ChatGPT spit out and send it over to Claude to sort of fancy up the writing and make it sound a little better. Well, you can make that an automated process just as a glyph. Maybe you're like me and you have a hard time coming up with prompts to generate AI images. So you create a glyph that has some different text input boxes like subject, composition, lighting, that sort of thing. Instead of just trying to think up your image prompt out of the thin air, you've got all these little blanks that you fill out that make sure you're covering all the aspects you want to cover. Then you have a block in your glyph that combines all that text, sends it off to chat GPT or Sonnet or whatever, and puts it into one cohesive image generation prompt that it then feeds to Schnell or Pro or whatever image generator and outputs the image. I can think of a lot of ways this can be helpful for creators. If you're already using glyph.ai or if you start using it and you come up with a glyph that's super helpful or really creative, please, if you're willing, share it with us so we can all benefit. If you want to use any of the glyphs that I've created so far as of this recording, I've only got the one. You could just go into the search box there at the top of the glyph webpage and type accelerator and you'll find it. I hope this is helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.